Hey everybody, before we jump right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that these things are streamed on Twitch and if you want to hang out with me while I'm live, you can follow the channel, will be the first link in the description. And we're getting the white pieces, you know that it's London system time. So let's see what opponent has in store for us, just gonna be playing Knight F3 and 80% of the times, if you're playing this below 1400, it's either gonna be a copycat or a Chigorian. So when they get knight c6, it's what it defines it to be a Chigorian. And they have basically two, two ways of playing this. It's either playing with knight f6 or delaying knight f6, meaning either bishop f5, g4, f6, a6, h6, against everything that's delaying knight f6. We're going to be playing with c4. There's a small difference when they play bishop g4 because they are threatening to ruin the pawn. So on that, we first play e3, hit the bishop, and then c4. But the idea is the same. It's pretty logical and easy to remember. And after bishop f5, c4, opponent takes. And against this... D5 could be like pretty interesting move, but the problem is that I think maybe E5 is a good move for my opponent. So we're just gonna be playing knight C3 and actually a lot of the beginners are gonna play knight B4. They're doing that all the time. And that's just not a good move. Because we have either queen check or rook C1. He could also play knight F6, that's better. Now I'm actually threatening to play E4 and expand. And... Can I explain what c4 makes it um, good here instead of uh, c3? So typically, if you want to be playing c3, usually you want to combine it with knight e5. But here with the knight on c6, you can take, and you want to be generally taking with a pawn. But in order to have any attack, you need to have your bishop on this diagonal, on the b1h7 diagonal. But it, because his bishop is already there, it means after knight e5, you get no attack, only a weak pawn on e5. So that will briefly sum it up, but... To understand it easier, whenever they have the knight in front of the c pawn, uh, it's always uh, playable to go c4, I would say. You can either break with c4 or e4 when they don't have pressure on the d4 pawn. That's, I think, something that you can use to guide yourself in these positions. And after e6, you can definitely expand. I'm a little afraid of bg4 though, because this pawn could be a bit vulnerable. So I'm just gonna go e3, keep it more simple, more standard. More casual if you want. And okay, if they actually go knight before, that's really asking for e4. Against that, it's much better because they release pressure on uh, d4. And against bishop b4, you can simply regain the pawn. Idea to castle sure next. If they take, we're more than happy to take with a pawn. Improving our control over the center. Always getting short castled. That is going to be kind of suicidal if they're going long castle to be honest but okay we get to see it just gonna bring the queen immediately already hitting the knight avoiding the conflict with the rook so you never really want to stay with your queen behind the enemy rook always move it away <laughs> as a rule of thumb not like something was happening immediately but it's always safe and i think now we have a double attack Hitting both pawns, that looks like an easy win to me. A6, just like uh, knight x on c7. Just kind of devastating. Also for ending bishop takes, also knight a7. Yeah, just take that free pawn. Protected by the London bishop. I guess everyone just forgets about the London bishop in this elos. Running now either bishop takes, either knight takes. Everything is about to fall apart. Just because the enemy king is so weak, so. Number one factor in chess, it's always king safety. I don't care how many pieces you're up or anything like that. If your king is getting made, it, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so you want to make uh, sure that your king is safe in the first place. And against bishop d6, we can trade. Just going to be taking these, allowing them to exchange because... It's just about taking this pawn, 
Because if they take back, the knight will remain unprotected. Can easily recapture. And simple plan. Rook c1. Bring the rook onto the open file. The knight is going to be very vulnerable and going to be pretty much mating black there very soon. And what you can notice in all these lower rated games, move 13, but already attacking his king, and he still didn't figure out a way to develop these two pieces. So no matter the position, he's just um, playing down a rook and a knight. So he takes on d4, which actually opens up the door for some funny tactics. After knight takes, rook takes. There's a discovery with bishop e6, and then we can take advantage of the rook. But maybe even better, <laughs> play the simple rook c1, <laughs> bringing the, the rook onto the open file, get more fuel to the attack, actually threatening mate in two with a double check followed by rook c8. So, yeah. I think black is simply lost. Like king d8 looks like best move to me, but still bishop e6 actually playable. Trying to bait him in taking my queen. I think that's actually a better version because if we take the rook, we take it with check with his king being on d8. It's not that it, like it really matters here with the position being so winning, but um, just a nice kind of detail I felt like. And... Yeah, if they take this, maybe even bishop takes a6 and then rook c8. So see, like we're about to deliver checkmate. These two pieces uh, get no chance to enter the game. That's simply typical for lower rated games. Okay, I mean, sure, I went for like a pretty quick attack. That's right, but... Still, instead of going long castle, he could have prioritized that and play knight f6, short castle. And he wouldn't have been in this situation, so. Also with black, you rarely go for long castle, as long as you know something about a line, I would say. So knight f6, allowing me to go for the double check, both the bishop and the rook. Only move is king d8. And that will allow a pretty beautiful checkmate on, uh, on c8. Oh, that's a pretty nice construction here. We managed to get uh, this one in. All right, getting another game and with the white pieces, you know it's gonna be a London system time. And 80%, even more. Below 1400, they're gonna be playing this Chigori like all the time. And okay, we see opponent playing it with A6. So, Whatever it's delaying knight f6, we play with c4. Against knight f6, we play e3. We see a6, just go c4. Strike in the center. As a rule of thumb against the knight c6 line, which is the Chigorin, c4 works quite well. And now he's not even protecting the center, meaning that he can take and develop with tempo, can play d5, hitting the knight. He's gonna go knight b4, and we're gonna check him. That happens literally every time, winning the free knight. Okay, opponent plays knight a7. I'm actually surprised. I'm gonna just go e4. Keep expanding in the center. We've got a really juicy lead in development. Plays bishop g4. Just gonna do like um, h3. Hit the bishop. Ready to take back with a queen. If they take back, we can simply go more aggressive. Play knight e5. Threatening to take... Create a big weakness on g6. If they step back, I think maybe bishop c4 with d6 might be pretty strong. That's an idea. Queen f3 also interesting with some g5. But I think mainly bishop c4 should be pretty strong against uh, bishop move. Eyeing the f7 square. So again, move 11, I'm up so many tempies. This is like, again, super common for low rated games. Just want to make sure you develop as fast as you can, not move the same piece twice, if possible, develop accordingly. I mean, according to the center and get castled as fast as you can, especially with the black pieces. With white in the London, as you see, 
can maybe sometimes uh, delay it a bit, keeping some attacking prospects. But with black, you want to be castling as fast as you can for sure. And now I'm just going to be going for this sweet little idea. Okay, opponent didn't allow it. So bad. <laughs> Wanted to go for the checkmate, but he instantly rejected it. He instantly rejects. So, can we do funny business like that? Okay, guys, I'm actually in the mood to sacrifice. Let's do some funny business. Let's go knight f7. Will it work? I don't know. Is it fun? Looks that way. So, first to take with a king. He doesn't even take it. Why is he not taking? I even don't know the reason why he shouldn't take. So, why is he not taking? At least he should tell me. Just gonna be collecting the free rook, I guess. I was about to sacrifice the bishop then in that position. And wanted to go like this and then queen b3. King d7 only move and then I wanted to go dc7. He had to move the queen and I'm pretty sure we were winning after long castle. I'll show that line after the game. I think it's actually quite important and probably many of you are wondering why we're not playing that. But after queen b3, now just, okay. Extra rook, his king is super weak. If he castles long, he's losing the queen. So, yeah, just completely winning. And just like waiting now to finish the game, get into the analysis tab and, and analyze that P-sack, which I think might have been legit. Uh, a bit unnecessary, that's true, but after you commit with these kind of d6 moves, you kind of have to go all in on the attack. Um, if I wanted to play more like safer, for sure should have thought about it before playing d6. So now he's hitting this pawn, just the bishop d5, avoid any kind of threats. Also, why don't we just get castle? I'm talking about my opponent that he should be castling. I think we can try to can just try to listen to my own advice here and do it. He can take the e4 pawn, I don't really mind. Like, It's simply going to be helping me because he's going to be opening up more files for my pieces. And now on bishop e7, well, can try to rescue the knight. I'll just do bishop d5. Bishop f7 was working for sure. Guys, anything wins in this position, okay? Literally anything. You can put your cat in front of the computer and it will most likely win the game. But just trying to follow basic rules here. Castling, you know, this kind of stuff. Trying to be instructive. Hope I am. <laughs> you guys let me know. Just bringing my knight. If knight d5, obviously I want to take it back and hit the enemy queen. Also, now a threat was to take, so he moves the king away. You just go rook c1, eyeballing the enemy queen. Queen d7, maybe just bishop e6. You don't have a cat? Well, a dog is fine too. Like, your dog can probably win it if he's not hungry. So, I mean, cat, dog, fish, whatever it is, whatever people pet. <laughs> I think that could be fine to win that disposition, basically. So... You can try. Trust me, they're gonna win. <laughs> Pets are clever. So, just rook ac1. I think we can now just go for a discovery with a knight. Hit the enemy queen. Twice, because the knight's also attacking it. And then... Okay, moves the queen away. So this opponent, he kind of has a role that, okay, my opponent's mindset is something like, if something is hanging, it must be a trap. We're not going to be taking it. He literally took none of my pieces this game. I play like an animal the whole time, like a whale. He just never wants to grab any of my stuff, you know? That's about this gambit. But we'll take that we check first. 
So he's like, okay, if something is happening, it must be a trap, right? Okay, never mind. He resigns. <laughs> okay, we managed to get a game. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And if you're interested in uh, checking out my London system course, will be the first link uh, in the description. So thanks again, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.